Hi guys, it's Pete from MyJewelryBench.com. Today we're going to make this form-fitting custom wedding band to fit to a specific engagement ring. Um, thank you, Chuck, because I'm glad I was able to help you get your design done. And I just want to show you another way of doing this. I hope you guys like this video, and let's get started. So before we get started, I want to go over one thing that you should add to your add-ons. You should turn on in the add-ons section, I should say. Let's move up to the Edit menu, come down to Preferences, and now we're going to go to the Add-ons tab here. I'm going to move this in the middle so we can see it. With the Add-ons tab selected, I want you to come over to the Search box, which is the little box with the magnification or the magnifying glass in it, and we're going to type in uh, Image and what you're going to come up with is one add-on you may or may not have a checked if it is not checked please put a check mark in the little box next to it what this is is it allows you to import a photo from a png a jpeg or any other image as a plane into your um, view your 3d view area and the reason we want to do that especially in this case is because uh, we will need it once you have that installed, come over to Save Preferences and then close this Preference tab box up. Now, with that done, first thing we're going to do is we are going to create a circle for our wedding band. And I will do Shift A and you can see in my screencast keys I've got those turned on so you can see which keys I'm pressing. So with that done, I will do Shift A, Curve, and then I'm going to do a circle. With our circle selected, I'm going to come over to our Tools tab here, and I'm going to come to the Items part of that, and I have the dimensions here, and we want to make the outside dimensions of our ring. We know our outside dimensions are 18.6 millimeters, so I'm going to do 18.6 by 18.6, and if I wanted to, I think I can make this 2 millimeters thick, but it doesn't work there. So we have our curve, it is 18.6 millimeters. I'm going to rotate this along the x-axis, but before I do that, I'm also going to come down to the active spline, and I'm going to increase the resolution to 32. With that done, um, this gives our circle a little more uh, detail in it. Now I want to rotate this along the x-axis, so I will hit RX90 and rotate it along the x-axis. While I've got that selected, I'm going to press Control A and I'm going to align rotation and scale, or apply the rotation and scale. So before I mentioned that we add, added that uh, insert image as plane tool, and now I'm going to show you how to do that. First we come over to the file menu, come down to import, and then you should have this, if you didn't have it before, you will have it now. If it was active before, it was always there. Um, we're going to import an image as a plane. Go to the area where you have the image of your ring. In, in my case, I have a folder called surround, and I have this image here, which is an image that I took from the top of the ring straight down. You'll notice that our, our image, and we're going to size this up right to about here, our image is uh, aligned to the Z axis and we want that to align to the X axis. So I will hit RX90 and flatten it out. And the next step I want to do so that I can see the image that's on this frame or on this uh, face is come over to the upper right section where you have these three globes. And I will click on the second one from the right, which is a render uh, image. So now looking straight down, there is our ring. It is just about centered. It's not perfect, but we're going to get the, the pretty much a great idea of how this is going to work. So I'm just going to kind of move this plane over just a little bit. And I am going to move it just like this. And the reason is because here is our curve. We're looking straight down at it, and it is not perfectly... Uh, it is not perfect to this uh, ring, but I want to align it to the side because I'm actually going to uh, design the ring to match the perimeter of our engagement ring. Now we're a little bit off, so I'm going to hit RZ on the, on the image, and I'm going to rotate that 
along the Z axis just a little bit so that I can get this plane to kind of level off our Z with our band just a little bit, just like so. Okay, so there is there is our band. You can see it's got that orange line in there. And what I want to do now is get this orange line to kind of uh, work its way around our our engagement ring. So this has a bunch of little points to it, but we're going to actually select this, hit the tab key, and I'm going to subdivide. So I would actually we've got we've got lots of little points here, if I'm not mistaken. No, well, just the four. So let's go back. Actually, let's do this. Let's hit all, and I'm going to hit the right mouse button, and I'm going to come down to subdivide somewhere along here, and right there. And I'm going to give this a couple subdivisions, just like so. Okay, now looking back from the top, we've got a point here that I can move. And if I move that, oops, we don't want to move it all the way over. We just want to grab this one point and just kind of move it over to the side, just like so. Okay, so you can see I've moved my point here to the top of the outer circumference of the ring. Now what I want to do is I want to grab my two points here, this little line here. I'm going to hold the shift key down and grab that one. Go back into the top view and I'm going to move those out to approximately here. And that gives us our arch across the top of the ring. And then what I want to do is take this point here, hold the shift key down, grab this point here, and I'm going to turn those ever so slightly, just about like so. I'm going to grab this point here and this point here, and I am going to size those along the x-axis, S, X, and just kind of pull them out a little bit. And hopefully we don't get too out of round, which we did. We got a little too out of round there. So if we look at it from the side view, I can grab here, I can grab this point here, and I can bring those down just to give me back my arch. If we go back to the top view, we're still okay. We've got our ring shape going around these curves, just like so. Okay, I've got that done. I'm actually going to turn off edit mode and go back into object mode. Okay guys, so there is the basic shape of our band and the top conforms to the right uh, one side of the ring. Oops, let me move that back. So now what I want to do with this is I want to convert this over to a mesh and then I want to give it some depth and width. So how do we do that? First, I'm going to right click on it. I'm going to come down to uh, convert. Where is it? Here's an option to convert it. Convert to mesh right here. And now our ring shake is a mesh. It's no longer a curve. So we can't really apply any curve modifiers to it. I'm going to go back into edit mode. I'm going to hit all. I'm going to hit extrude Y. So E and then Y and then I'm going to extrude out just like so. I'll go back in the top view and I'm going to see is that about how wide we want to make it. I think I want to make this just a little bit wider. Something about here. That looks pretty good. The tab key to go back into object mode. Okay so now that I've got the ring with some depth to it I can now give it some thickness. With that selected, I can go back into edit mode. I can come over to face mode, hit all to make sure that all faces are selected. Hit extrude and then size and I'm going to make this a little smaller and then I'm going to give this a thickness of about here. And that gives us the shape of our band. And if we go back in the top view, you can see the picture of our engagement ring and our band matches the side. The next step is to um, add in my diamonds to that. I'm going to look at this from the side. We're perfectly round. We're in good shape. So I can come over here and press all from the side. I'm going to add in a line. Here's a little trick for those of you who don't know how to do this. I'm going to press control R to add in a loop. I'm going to put that in the middle, press the left button then press it again and now that edge loop or is, is set in the middle of our ring. The next thing I want to do is duplicate that so while I'm in an edit mode with just that line selected I can hit shift D and then press enter and now I've duplicated that ring and I can hit P 
to separate selection. And now that I've got that done, uh, we've got two curves. Come back into edit mode, object mode. Here is our new line that's selected. And if I size that up, you can see I can size it up and down. And it is only on one side, but that's okay. The cool part about this is now I can convert this line into a, a curve modifier. So I'm going to come down, convert to curve. So now my line has been converted to a curve. And now I could add diamonds to it. And what I want to do is I want to add in maybe seven diamonds along the side. So I've got a total of 14 diamonds. Actually, I think what I want to do is add in a large diamond in the middle. So I'm going to come over to Jewelcraft. Actually, if I do that, I'm going to use my own tools here. Select a round diamond, append. I'm going to bring that up size that, bring that right there. I want to make that a little smaller. Yes, just about like so. One, let's bring that down right like so. And with that selected, I'm going to apply the rotation and scale. Okay, now I'm going to add in some other diamonds. So we'll add in another, uh, let's say, square diamonds and actually I'm going to stick with round. We'll stick with round. I'm going to hit append. I'm going to bring that up a little bit. Select that. Control A just to apply rotation and scale. With that done now I can size this up ever so slightly and I think I want to make that uh, that's good right there. And now I can select our other curve. Okay so with this new diamond selected I'm going to select our curve. I'm going to come down to Jewel Craft and I'm going to hit the Scatter tool. And let's tilt this 180 degrees so that it is upright. I am going to move the starting position somewhere here. Let's move the ending position so it's alongside. Uh, my offset, I'm going to move in just a little bit. And let's get that right there. And from the top, let's get the start position right about here. That looks good. I'm just going to take some diamonds away. Seven diamonds is pretty good. I'm going to move that starting position so that our diamonds are all about like so. And then I am going to mirror this on the other side. And we will mirror on the X side. Let's get rid of this. We'll hide that. <clears throat> so now I've got all my diamonds in place. And let's just grab our band. So the diamonds are in place. If I come over here and apply a material to this ring, let's see, we're going to give it, um, I'm going to give this a silver tone. And... We're going to make this a little rougher. Don't mind these settings, but at least it gives us a look for how, what we've got cooking so far. And now I can bring back my image, look at the top, and there is basically the shape of our band and what it's going to look like when it's done. So that's one way for you guys to design a custom fit wedding band looking at it from one side. Obviously you can do some tweaking to this. Um, not every engagement ring is going to be the same and depending on what your customer style and desires are are going to be different. But that is one way to do that. And then the cool thing about this is I can go and select each of these diamonds. Uh, we'll, we're going to hide that. So let me select each of these diamonds in Jewel Craft and then I can go ahead and here I can add in the prongs and then I can just turn them around or make them wherever I want. So depending on how I want these to look, uh, let's see here, position, come over here like that. And then uh, I can grab this one, add in a new prong. We'll just do one and then rotate that around so you can see how that works. Just like so. And I can do the same with this. Come over and add a new prong. 
and we'll just do one and I'll rotate it around so that it's on the bottom and there you see I've got the diamonds there and now I can select these diamonds again add in our cutters I hope you liked this video guys if you did please give it a thumbs up I kind of rambled on a little bit and I'm sorry about that if you're not a subscriber please consider subscribing the more subscribers I get the better my channel seems to do on YouTube and I appreciate all the subscribers and all the help hey I just hit 3100 subscribers and it's all about you guys I appreciate it if there are any requests of things that you'd like to see please let me know hey and be advised I've got a new 3d printer coming this week and I'll be doing a full review of that next weekend so be on the lookout for that Take care, guys, and have a great day.